sometimes it's really nice to tell a story, a farm to fork story and a success story, and now we're all happy and it's all win-win, and that's not how it works. It has been tough. My name is Faraz Ramji. The company is Norda Industries and uh, based here in Kenya. My parents are both from East Africa. So my dad is born in Uganda. My mom is actually born in Congo. I don't know if any of you have heard about Idi Amin. He was a dictator in Uganda and he didn't like Asians. So his solution was kick out all the Asians. It's basically exiles and you had something like 30 days to get out with one suitcase. And so my dad ended up fleeing to the UK. And my mom, who was studying in Rwanda at the time, was sent to the UK to study English. So they met in the UK. I was born in the UK. I would come to East Africa frequently. I loved it. When I come to Africa, I just felt so free. And I loved that freedom and I loved the emotional intelligence of the people. I ended up studying development in London. As soon as I finished university, I came to Rwanda. I was looking for jobs and my grandfather was looking, you know, kind of from a distance. And he said, let's start a business together. We make snack foods. We make uh, potato chips, corn snacks, and corn puffs. Potatoes are very interesting. When I started the business, I really focused on, on coming up with really snazzy packaging. And I was like, wait, can I get the product inside be of that quality as well? And so I went looking for potatoes and they'd bring me potatoes one day and we'd slice them and fry them and, and they'd be okay. And the next day they'd be brown and the next day they'd be green and the next day they'd be something else. And I just couldn't get it. So finally I, I went online to good old Google and I typed in potato supply Kenya. Ingenious. And I came across a group of farmers in an area called Bomet in Kenya. And they had actually been trained in how to farm specific varieties of potatoes for crisps. Different varieties are better for different processes. For crisps, you need a variety which has a high dry matter, which basically means low moisture content. You also need it to have a low sugar content because otherwise you get those brown rings. You actually don't want that. We actually found a Dutch variety which worked very well here in Kenya from these cooperatives. This is how disconnected we sometimes all are. So in the NGO world, they're doing this work to train farmers on how to grow potatoes for crisps. But at the same time, they hadn't gone and found the market. And so when I called them up, they were thrilled. They were in my office the next day with samples and we tried them out and they were really good because of course it followed best farming practice, etc. The next weekend we went to Beaumet and it was really interesting because these are all smallholder farmers. They own typically one or two acres of land and they struggle with their daily livelihoods because they've been dependent on middlemen who essentially fleece them and tell them, okay, your potatoes are gonna rot, you know, this is our price, they get desperate. We sat down in their school hall, which was basically a mud hut. I remember these 20 or 30 farmers, and they were happy, they were delighted. Well, that's, that's how it started. The farmers tell us that they're putting their kids through school and university because of our contracts. We see them grow. We see them able to expand their, their farm, and I think, you know, their profound impact to their livelihoods. Norda has changed me personally, my family too, and my community. Now my community, they are sure when they are planting potatoes, they have the market for their potatoes. And some of the big commodity companies here, they did not want to touch our products. So we worked with much smaller distributors. They have expanded their facilities. They have invested in warehousing. They've invested in trucks. They've helped them with training. And they themselves are then impacting other lives. Our business now, it's expanding. Because initially when we started, we had one store. Right now we have two stores. We started with one employee and right now we have nine employees. My uncle joined the business about a year and a half ago. We had all these ambitious growth plans and then six months into him joining, I get a call in the middle of the night and it's my sales manager. I say to him, is everything okay? He says, no, the factory's on fire. So in a rush to the factory and there's this eerie feeling, you know, as you're approaching, there's a smoke and there's a fire engines and there's a police. They battled the fire till 8 a.m. and everything was decimated from the machines to the stock, everything. Fire had finished, fire services, people had left, the police had left, the insurance had left, and I'm about to head to my car myself, and it's about 5 p.m., exhausted, hadn't slept the whole night before, and I see one of my farmers rock up, and I said to him, what are you doing here? He says, I heard. The moment I heard, I got in the car and, 
and came down here to grieve with you. And it was so touching because, um, of course, you know, it was, there, it was a loss for them too. I wanted to be with them, mourn with them, because it was a hard moment for all of us. So that was a, uh, I don't know what you call it, defining moment, I don't know, they say these things build character, <laughs> I don't know. Probably the reason we're still standing today is because of, of the experience of Seed. And you're running your business day to day and you're seeing it like this with blinkers on and then wake up Seed, you have Seed and suddenly you start thinking bigger. You start thinking laterally and dynamically. Stanford Seed teaches you to think like, like that. It's shifted our outlook, our ambition, our values. So I see that the sky's the limit. My passion was development and helping people to grow and uplifting and creating impact in this part of the world. We started this business purely for profit, but we've ended up, I think, right back to where I started in development. I believe we each have our unique breed of impact. I believe that each of us, deep down, we want to serve humanity. We want to make the world a better place. We want to know that our life mattered.